All right, everybody, welcome to station five. We've added polynomials, we've subtracted polynomials, we have multiplied polynomials. So you knew this was coming. You knew that dividing polynomials would be our final step. When we have polynomials that are being divided, what I like to do is we're thinking of this top polynomial all as being divided by that 6K on the bottom. So instead of trying to do it all on the same spot, I'm gonna split it into different chunks, similarly to how I did the multiplying of polynomials. I'm going to think of this as 30, k to the fourth being divided by that 6k, negative 12, k to the third being divided by that 6k, and finally, 24k being divided by 6k. I think of this as three separate pieces because we need to make sure that every piece of that polynomial is being divided by 6k. So I'm going to treat this as three totally separate fractions, three totally separate problems. In the first problem, I'm going to worry about my coefficients first, just like I did when I multiplied. So if I have 30 divided by 6, the first thing that I know is that that leaves me with a 5. 30 divided by 6 is 5. Now when I think of k to the fourth, that's k times k times k times k. Four letters being multiplied together. I'm dividing that by just one k. So if I think of this as k being multiplied by itself four times, and I divide it, by the k on the bottom, 4 minus 1, or canceling one of those k's, leaves me with k to the third power. Make sure that when you're dividing, you are subtracting those exponents. One of those exponents is going to cancel. Multiplying by k, dividing by k, same thing. All right, so my next term, I have negative 12 divided by 6. I'm going to have negative 2. And if I have k to the third divided by k, one of those is going to cancel, and I'm going to be left with k squared. Finally, at the end, I have 24 divided by 6, which leaves me with a positive 4 as my coefficient. And k divided by k is just 1. They cancel each other out. So I don't need to put a k on that final term. So my final answer would be 5k to the third minus 2k squared plus 4. I divided each coefficient by 6, and then I subtracted 1k from each exponent. I divided by k, so I canceled out one of those multiplications. All right, you know what time it is. Pause the video. I'm going to help you by splitting it into my three fractions. So 25b squared over 5b squared, 15b to the fourth over that 5b squared again, and finally, negative 5b squared over 5b squared. Treat those like three separate fractions and do your three separate divisions. All right, coming back, hopefully you've tried it on your own. First off, I have 25 divided by 5. That leaves me with 5. b squared divided by b squared, those are the same, so they cancel each other out. So I'm left with just a 5. Next up, I have 15b to the fourth divided by 5b squared. 15 divided by 3, or divided by 5 would give me 3. I gave away the answer. b to the fourth divided by b squared would leave me with a b squared. Four b's being multiplied on top. Two of them cancel because we're dividing, so I'm left with 2. Finally, I have negative 5 divided by 5, which gives me negative 1, and a b squared by b squared, which cancels itself out again. So I'm left with 5 plus 3b squared minus 1, but I see that I'm not quite done yet. I have a 5 and a negative 1 that I can combine. So my final answer would be 3b squared plus 4. So when you're dividing by a monomial, you just need to make sure that every piece of your numerator, every term, is being divided by both the number and the variable on the bottom. In this case, it was a 5 and a b squared. I needed to multiply by both of those pieces. All right, there's one more example on your worksheet that looks complicated, but we need to treat it the same way. In this case, we have m and n as our variables, so we're going to split this up just like we did before. 4, m squared, n squared, divided by 2, m squared, n. I'm just going to worry about my first term 
so I can show you how I would break this into even smaller pieces before you try the other terms. So the first thing I see is a four divided by a two. Four divided by two leaves me with two. The next piece that I see is an m squared divided by an m squared. Well, anything divided by itself is one, so those terms, in this case, cancel each other out. We're still in the first fraction, but I have one more piece. I have an n to the second power, or n squared, divided by n. So if I have two n's being multiplied together, and I'm dividing by one, one of them is going to cancel out, and I'm left with just two n. So that whole first term, 4m to the second power, n to the second power, divided by 2, m to the second power, n, which all sounds crazy, really just simplifies to 2n. So now for the next one, I want you to write your next two terms, this fraction and this fraction, and I want you to divide each piece separately. Pause the video and give one of them a try. All right, we're back. We're going to do this in small pieces, just like we did before. So I have 6m to the third n divided by 2m squared n. So first, 6 divided by 2 is 3m to the third divided by m squared leaves me with just 1m, or m to the first power, and an n divided by an n. Anything divided by itself is just 1. So in this case, I have 3m left over. My final piece, I have a negative 2m squared n squared being divided by 2m squared n. A negative 2 divided by a positive 2 would leave me with negative 1. m squared divided by m squared, anything divided by itself, is 1. And n squared divided by n would just leave me with nn. So, so far I have 2n plus 3m minus 1n, but I'm not done yet. I can combine my 2n and my negative 1n. Those have the same variable. Those are like terms. So my final answer would be 3m plus just 1n. You could write 1n or you could leave the 1 off. That's up to you. Notice that when I write my answer, I always write my answer in either alphabetical order, so in this case, the M term came before the N term, or with exponents, I use the biggest exponent and work my way down to the smallest exponent. Your answer is not wrong if it's in a different order. You just need to make sure that if it's a multiple choice question, you're able to rearrange it. This dividing is a little tricky because you need to make sure that you're dividing all of your pieces on top your coefficients and your variables with exponents all by pieces on the bottom. So if you need help, please ask your teacher and make sure that when you're doing this, you're very careful to keep track of both your signs and your exponents. All right, give it a try.